Greetings and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 82, November 15th, 2023. A wonderful time. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. We have 24 people in the chat today thanking my entrepreneurs, my shining entrepreneurs, as we prepare to do this podcast for YouTube on a pre-record. So let's get going. What is our topic for today? You know, moving into Black Friday, uh, I want to share a little bit of my experience and my research regarding Black Friday and how entrepreneurs have always been affected by this day. So Black Friday, I'm going to do two things today. I'm going to share, number one, how the African-American culture of Black Wall Street was committed to making this such an empowering day for those who had lost so much during the year because prices were hiked up. People were trying to just get the, the best from the best at the top. So if it boils down to it and you have to lower your prices, then it's okay. Raising the prices high at this point was what a lot of entrepreneurs did during this time in order to make back what they could potentially lose in the near future of that year. So let's go back in history and look up the term Black Friday. It was first used in 1869 Give me one second. Let me get this information. Okay, it was first used in in 1869 that describes the crash of the U.S. gold market. And it was on September 24th. The crash was caused by financier Jay Gold and railroad businessman James Fisk attempting to corner the gold market which resulted in financial panic and the collapse of the market. The effects of the crash were felt by the U.S. economy for many years. So the term Black Friday was first used in reference to shopping the day after Thanksgiving in the 1950s. Police in Philadelphia called it a Black Friday because they had to control crowds. Okay, we're going to go and look at that. This would bring large crowds, traffic accidents, shoplifting, and other issues, causing officers to work extra hours. The term Black Friday became synonymous with shopping in the late 1980s, and retailers reinvented the name to reflect the backstory of how accountants used different color ink, red for negative earnings and black for positive earnings. In to denote a company's profitability. So if we were to take this back, now this is what I'm thinking. The connotation at this time in the 1800s and the 1950s were all about African Americans doing and, you know, um, being in the essence of, uh, you know, getting out of going into the civil rights movement in the 60s there was a negative connotation on the term black. So in that, we turn this thing around and we see that many entrepreneurs really and truly bartered with African-American individuals at this time. Why? Because the bartering was how they got their work. Because you got to remember, there was another shift in time, and I'm not too sure what year, But the Jim Crow laws became effective and they weren't able to penalty African-American people during this time as slaves. So they had to barter somehow. And according to the um, history of America, there wasn't a lot of funds that were distributed to equate to the profitability of the work that was performed by the African-American individuals. So since they weren't able to pay, they did this thing called barter. You owe me a certain amount of money because I, say, tended to your crops 
for five days and you may owe me say $300, just say. So instead of paying me my $300 in actual cash or goods and service or something that I can tangibly have, I would then at that point barter. So with the exchange and the the balance expenditure, I show that I came in and purchased a certain amount of product from you. There was no need to shoplift because many people earned their keep. That's how they lived. So coming into the stores and buying grain and buying cattle and buying certain things were predominantly already understood. And I believe that the term Black Friday was used in a positive connotation because we were the ones, African-Americans were the ones who got the entrepreneur out of the red and put them into the positive. And so that was amazing when I ran into that. And so basically that's what continues to happen in our society So I wanted to put this video out to just show entrepreneurs, black, white, green, yellow, orange, purple, blue, that it is time for us to recognize and give, you know, accolade and respect to the historical purposes of business development. And I think this is critical to share. Uh, A more accurate explanation of the term Uh, Black Friday also dates back to early 60s when police officers began to use the phrase Black Friday. Now, the police officers during this time began to use Black Friday as a negative connotation. And this is how Black Friday became a negative in our entrepreneurial experience because now they're using all the negatives to connotate that Black Uh, individuals were going to be coming into these retail uh, areas. It's going to be an overflow. People are not going to be able to, you know, uh, watch as they would normally be able to watch because so many people are just influxing in. And, you know, Philadelphia at this time was predominantly a big city, as we could call it. So they put the negative, the police put the negative connotation upon the concept Black Friday, but the entrepreneur did not. So that's how that came to be. Um, Even though that's when the majority of entrepreneurs made their money. So what's your thought on that? (laughs) I, I, you know, Jean, I really felt that um, this was going to be one of those high and low chronicles of a nonprofit today because we're looking at the potentiality of um, the disrespect. But if you take it and you look at it from the longevity of the term itself, it is powerful. It's showing that we as entrepreneurs, even back then, because don't forget, Black Wall Street was way, way, way back then, even though it, you know, we were doing so good until it had to be you know, there's always devils in the details. So it had to be shown how good we were doing by having others, you know, come in on the negative side and do something that wasn't kosher, that wasn't respectful to individuals, especially African-Americans. So in the world of the United States of America, I am learning that the power is within the individual. And when people constantly put that term of a, a black or African American, or, you know, it's a signaling, it's a signal to be mindful of what is being done because we do have the opportunities to be the best we can ultimately be. But I, I do dare all of my shining entrepreneurs to try to be as respectful to the culture itself as far as we have come, as far as all cultures have come in America. Being mindful to the fact that 
we have a lot to do in this society and it's best to be connected in positive ways. You know, I was just talking to one of my clients and they shared how the story of the Hispanics and the African Americans, how we really, really and truly got along uh, and how, you know, the verbiage of everything came to be. Now, let's look at some countries that don't believe in Black Friday. And let's look at how successful these people are. You got the North Korean that does not celebrate and participate in Black Friday. Afghanistan and Venezuela. And finally, Iran. So if you look at, say, even North Korea, they don't buy into the hype that they're going to lower their prices at a certain time of year to make up for what has been lost. Why? Because the Koreans do things in bulk. And by doing things in bulk, what happens is you get a flow of service because you're not too greedy at the beginning of the year. So you would have to be lenient or cheaper at the end of the year. It's a flux. It's, it's a, uh, you know, a way that they can control their narrative. And that's what they do. So the prices are the prices and they don't go down at a certain time. But yet here in America, <laughs> we decide that we want to raise the prices 200% just so we can be talked down to a normal price. And if a person does not talk down, like myself, I believe that when I go in to purchase something, the value of that thing is going to be equally fair to me because it's what the price states it is. Now, when I go in and it's marked up 200%, well, I'm not going to argue and deb debate with the entrepreneur or, or the, mer the um, merchant seller. Why? Because um, this is what they're asking. Now, what I would like to have, what I would like to see in the near future with my shining entrepreneurs is that when we go through these challenges of raising prices and marking them up just to, you know, have them marked down or talked down, maybe if someone comes in genuinely and they're in the pro process of paying the full price and you know that you've marked this up, go ahead and maybe give that 10%, give that 20% because at that desk, it's going to feel so good. Like, wow, I get to save. Oh, this is awesome. This is a wonderful thing. Um, I don't believe that colors should be equated with uh, nationalities or uh, ethnicity. I really don't. Um, I don't know why. You know, every time I hear it, I think cheap. I think um, I, I, I think negative up until the time. I just ran into this research that shared how valuable Black Friday is because it's putting a connotation on positivity for an entrepreneur at this given moment to make money to feed their family and at the cost that it really and truly and genuinely should be, not the up cost. So I'm at that crossroad right there, <laughs> you know? Kennedy, yes, yes, yes. These people, sometimes people will come in just to see what they can possibly gain or benefit from you. And we must be mindful. That's why so many people go in and negotiate everything. And then that negotiation becomes a contest of, you know, no, I'm not going to do it. Or you ask me to lower my prices and I'm an entrepreneur that has to pay taxes on da 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 and then it's a big schmeal you know so is it really worth it is it really worth it one thing that I noticed going from the brick and mortar stores to the online community and um, as a matter of fact I'm going to be creating a store for the channel here 
at Chronicles of a Nonprofit, business, entrepreneur, um, items and different things like that. But I have to get a contractor that is going to work with me to where I can keep the cost at the most effective and minimal for everyone involved so that we will continually, you know, be positive and stay positively in the realm of um, Black Friday. You know what I mean? That positivity that people are willing to buy things when they know that there's a sale going on. They know that there's something they're going to benefit from. Okay, look at the Dollar Tree. The Dollar Tree became one of the biggest ideas when you can go in, if you have $5, you're going in, you're going to be able to get five items, no matter if it's a household item, something you can use in the living room, like a candle or, you know, little picture frames or even pictures, as a matter of fact, all the way to food, all the way to candy, all the way to cosmetics, all the way to, you know, um, utility purchases, uh, um, such as car fresheners and different things like that. That was the most, that was a creative, unique idea. And the Dollar Trees have never went out of business. They will never go out of business, even though they've raised their prices, I guess, but they had to do it for inflation. But a dollar and 25 cent per item you're basically paying the taxes on it and the rise up for cost of the trucks to bring the things to the store. And it's just different things like that that make you say, wow, you know, everyone is dealing with something. I'm looking at the way uh, travel is happening. And I spoke with one of my clients who is uh, traveling to New York for the holidays and one of the things that they're saying is that the prices are higher in gas and, you know, the upkeep of the car, the oil changes has gotten more expensive, especially for the vehicle that, that this individual drives. And <laughs> this is a hot commodity because the Dodge Chargers, the Dodges, um, the Camaros, all of those vehicles are high end almost. So with that, then you have to sit at the red light or sit at trash, rush hour traffic for about an hour. It's simply amazing how these things work themselves out. But somehow or another, we continue to move forward with the economy. We continue to buy things. We continue to travel. We continue to do all these things. So that's powerful. That's letting us know that we are representing ourselves and our entrepreneurs. And that's a very positive thing. Look at the whole governmental shutdown. See, when you think of public entity and you think of the struggle of the public entity, those entities in governmental realms are primarily affected by the way society as a whole chooses to do something. See, a president does not control America the economy, or anything. The legislation does not control anything. It just tries to set the standard, set the stage. But when you look back and you sit there and you say, we as a society woke up and decided that we're not gonna, you know, buy into this extreme tax hike. We're not gonna do it. What happens? Now, all of a sudden, the government is lowering prices and you'll see that and you'll be like, oh, that's a good thing. It's not that they chose to do it. They had to do it because people uh, or penalties would have been so severe and no and everything would have been locked in. You know, all the, you know, um, prison systems or jails would have been overcrowded <laughs> and then they would have done what? Dismiss cases, allow people to, you know, pay to get out and different things like that. <laughs> it's just so amazing how America works. And then we don't call ourselves anything but America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, right? It is a very mindful 
perspective to take when you sit back and you look at the history of America and you say, is it really and truly the great thing? Um, so let's look about, let's talk about Africa. So social distancing and lockdown restrictions meant that South African retailers had to change their approach to, to Black Friday, turning the event from a one-day in-store shopping experience into a month-long campaign, which is now largely online. And this was as of November 7th, uh, 2023. So is it time to reimagine Black Friday? Um, turning the event into uh, a, just a daily routine. Because if we do that, I think we'll all benefit together. You know, data is showing that consumers are aligning and they're taking their risks and they're making a decision and they're going online. One of the greatest things is being able to go online and shop Amazon as opposed to going to Macy's and trying to find the same item. It's it's a very big research opportunity that could save hundreds, if not thousands. You know, so discounts are very vital to the living conditions of those who have experienced the increase in cost of living. But as an employee, you don't make the cost of living increase as it is going up, as the inflation is going up. So there needs to be something done. Impressive discounts are not always commercially viable, um, especially given the significant change in consumer and economic landscaping. With this being a backdrop, retailers are at a pivotal point, therefore having to ask themselves whether Black Friday still makes sense to promote. Because again, why promote with such decrease in price when the reality is keep everything at a even keel throughout the year and then you'll still make your money over, over time. See, everybody wants to do things fast and in a hurry. But entrepreneurs, I want you to really, really think about this, whether you're doing an Etsy store, an Amazon store, um, and, and Karen, I definitely want to talk to you about you helping to assist me to do my online virtual store. Um, we have to go through, you have to share with me the best ways of putting that store online together for my clients and my subscribers. I just want to be able to give you guys the best opportunity that you can have in order to be successful in business development. So I definitely want to put portfolio packaging um, items together for those who are in business to be able to build their portfolios. Uh, ink, I definitely want to be part. I definitely want my store to have uh, ink and continual ink where you can just purchase and, you know, do that with Hewitt Packard. And uh, that was a really good company to get into because everyone in the in the future and they did take a, a big hit at the beginning because not, you know, everybody needed ink because you had the high fortune 500 companies doing their advertisements. So ink was very predominant in career development. So, so that <laughs> Hewlett Packard came out with a great idea and it will be forever more. Um, they're doing less printing now because of the online stores and the downloads and different things like that. So it could become obsolete like Blockbuster, but who knows right now, I know I buy my ink all the time. So I still use it very, very efficiently. So I thank you so much for being here. My shining entrepreneurs keep doing what you're doing. Keep being consistent, keep being ready and keep doing the best that you can do for yourself because you are rocking your life the best that you know how in the shoes you're rocking. Whether you're at Macy's, whether you're at, you know, I remember my mother telling me, if you want name brand, let's go out to Hills Department Store. It was in Lincoln Nose, 
on the east side of Youngstown. And we're going to go and get you these bedazzles and these things that has all these colors and, and markers. And we're going to get you some white oakies. <laughs> That's what they called them back in the day. And then we're going to have you, if you want name brand, you're going to put your own name on your own item. And from that point, it always taught me to invest in things that mattered. So that's what I want to let you know about the shoes you're rocking in today because it's vital, it's important for you to move forward with your life. You know, uh, one more final story. I was talking to a client about having to go to the coach outlet and spend $500 on a quote authentic coach bag. And this was in high school or not high school, in college. And I was trying to be something I wasn't to fit in with the people that I was around. But sometimes you got to do that uh, kind of fake it to make it thing. And like she said, well, where's the bag? I said, I have no idea. I probably gave it away. And then she said, mm, imagine that $500 if you had saved it from 2000 until now and invested it. How much money would you have right now? I said, oh, God. So I lost it all, the 500, the purse, the, but I learned a lot. So I want you to do that. I want you to learn a lot about the shoes you're rocking and why you choose to rock them. Thank you so much. You have a blessed day. I hope this helped you. And don't forget to email me or you can put the information in the description box or not description box in the comment box. And I will get back to you. Thank you. Peace, love. Mm -hmm. And I'm out.